As one of the oldest and most unique cities on the planet, few places have much more intrigue than Venice. From gondolas to the buildings and maze of pathways. But it's a new idea that's piquing the interest of tech and academic communities across the globe. Now, when it comes to Venice, making waves in VR probably isn't the first thing you think of. But this place is home to an ambitious project that plans to break new ground in the virtual reality world. This is the Venice Time Machine, a plan by some 100 academics to build the world's most historically accurate and comprehensive simulations of civilization. A system to create an entirely immersive time travel experience. It's an information system of the future, practically, which has to do with big data of the past. Our goal is really to structure all the data which is contained in these documents in a manner that tomorrow's historians will be able online to go through access points and to find what they want. The project is championed by computer scientists at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in partnership with the city's state archives and Venice's own university, Cafascari. Essentially, the idea is to scan and interpret not hundreds or thousands, but millions of state documents using cutting-edge data analytics to unearth connections between documents and eventually simulate any time in the city's history. What we are trying to do is to take an unstructured data and to structure it exactly the way we do today with big data analysis. People who are sitting in their home with a computer and they can really enter the archives here and see the documents that this is virtual reality, of course. But virtual reality can be also augmented in the sense that uh, people would really be able to uh, make a sort of a journey inside the documents. And if you visit the home of those records, why the team picked one of the most logistically challenging locations on the planet becomes pretty clear. Nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. What when you think big data, it doesn't get much bigger than this. The Venice Archives, led by Giovanni Cattiano. This is a massive, massive collection of documents. How many documents are in here? We have 50, 60 kilometers of shelves where we store original documents starting from the 10th century up to the 20th century mainly documents of the former Venetian Republic and of the governments that succeeded to the Venetian Republic in the 19th century. Venice is considered unique in Western civilization as holding one of the most comprehensive historical archives on the planet, with records on everything from international trade and politics to some of the world's earliest maps and urban planning designs. How important are these documents to Italy and to the world, in fact? Venice had commercial relations with all over the, all over the Mediterranean, uh, you find documents here. And the scholars come from all over uh, the world to study not only Venetian history, but their own history. But it's only since 1946 that the international community became truly aware of just what was stored here. So what do we have here? This, I, I understand, is one of your more interesting Documents you well, have this is part archive. of the diplomatic archives of the of, uh, of Venice. In one of these, uh, there is an original letter sent through Paris, through uh, through France, uh, to Venice, uh, to the Doges, uh, by Benjamin Franklin and John Adams uh, as ministers of the newborn uh, United States of America. Can we look at it? Uh, we can. If I 1784. 1784. Wow. So just seven years yeah. after the foundation of the wow. United States, the first foundation. What does it say? Judging that uh, an intercourse between the said United States and the most serene Republic of Venice, founded on the principles of equality, reciprocity, and friendship, may be of mutual advantage to both nations. And uh, um, in, in fact, uh, uh, 15 years later, the, the Venetian Republic ended her, uh, her Right, so, life. so uh, this document will then be in the Venice time machine one day? Oh, certainly it will. The archives got involved in this program because of the international demand for these documents, along with the ambitious vision behind the time machine. It's a very relevant project. Uh, uh, we don't have enough people, enough technicians, 
and uh, they are planning to, to scan something like 12 million files in the next year or two and this is, these are numbers that we couldn't afford to, to, to cope with. Once fully operational, the system that consists of some eight scanners will be able to transcribe and archive more than five different handwritten languages, ranging from Italian to Latin. Data that will then be moved into the time machine. I'm going to see exactly where they lived, exactly what they had in their kitchen. We can also do this. We have a sort of inventories here that throughout the ages that you can see exactly how all the tools in the kitchens change, the material change, what kind of culture kitchen had, what kind of even uh, food was stored in the house. Will this change the museum experience? Will I be able to walk through old Venice? Yes, I think so, yes. Just imagine what we can do with 3Ds. I mean, from the actual data which is stored here, we can really create Venice in the past, in the 16th century, and we can walk through it. Something that works for the Archives Patriarch, too. How important is looking after these documents to you? Well, uh, for me personally, this has been a choice of life. I started very early, I was 23 and now it's 36 or something years I'm working here. And so it's been a season for life because uh, I'm quite I'm Venetian, I live in Venice, I was raised in Venice and I, I couldn't live anywhere else uh, besides Venice. And this, in this place, uh, the history of Venice is uh, stored and must be preserved and this is our uh, duty and our effort.